What's going on guys? So today we have a PS5 with a broken HDMI port. See it's very badly damaged, you can tell. So we're gonna try to replace that. Lift it up in the corners. Now the other side and then do the same thing. Just pull it back. And then what I like to do is I like to start it off on this side. And we have all of these screws that we have to take off in the corners. Um, so you have one, two, three, four, five, the silver one right here, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, and then underneath here to take this off, you're gonna have to kind of pull it in the in the center with two with all your fingers, so you don't break the the hinges. Where were we at? Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. About sixteen screws. It might be a little bit different. They're not all always the same, but it's generally around 16 screws. Screwdriver, electric screwdriver and get in here. You can take the fan out like this once you get that. Now with the cable for this, you typically want to use something to help you like take it out. If you wiggle it, and even if you're holding it by the wire, which technically speaking, you shouldn't hold it by the wire because you could you could damage the wire and pull the wire up. You don't want to just straight up pull it out. So what I do is I will um, wiggle it until I feel like it's kind of loose, and then I'll slowly pull it while I'm wiggling it to take it out. So now that we got that off, what we can do is take off this this frame so this is the cd drive we're gonna we're gonna remove this so there's a cable right here you don't need to take out the one from the actual drive on both sides so there's this connection and then this connection okay so just kind of wiggle it if you don't have like pliers or like really needle nose uh, pliers uh, you, and you only have your hands to work with it just like i said wiggle it and once you get to get the plastic out try to pull it from the plastic now this one just pulls up straight wiggling and this one, it has a little notch right here that you have to push back. So you can get your tweezer. Typically you want to use a plastic tool, but you just put, push this back slightly and then pull it out. So just be very careful with that. Once you got that out, um, since this is sticky down to here, you can just remove this. You don't have to, you don't have to do it any specific way. And this just comes off. It's not attached to anything. Now that we got um, all of that taken out, there's a bunch of screws on this thing that we have to remove because this this frame is attached to the board, and we need to take that off. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-one screws on just this frame, <laughs> just this cover. So we have to remove all of those screws. One hour later. Right now we're gonna take off all the antenna cable so we're going to take off this one right here um you can just kind of lift it um from the edge right there it's not it's not going to damage it just be very careful and to take this out you're going to have to flip it over and then unscrew you got one screw here and then one screw here you got to take out these two all right now that we got that done we're just going to lift this up it's a little difficult so be careful now you don't want to underneath it has the the power supply so you kind of want to hold the power supply and just pull it up what we're going to do is we're going to fix this right here you see how bad this is you see how it's crooked it's slanted right there that is very very bad so hopefully it didn't damage the traces we're gonna try to take this out now wow that is terrible that's probably the worst HDMI port I've ever seen. Brother, um, uh, that is severely, what's that? Severely damaged. Um, that's definitely that, going to have to remove that. As you can see, this is severely, severely damaged. So this low melt solder it helps with the peat resistance. Okay. So since the board is very thick uh, on the PlayStations. You definitely want to have low melt solder on uh, here just to help you from uh, from having to heat up the board for so long. Now you can use uh, any kind of flux, but I like to use Amtec 213 or Amtec 559. Now, got to get your tip, clean out the tip of your solder gun or solder tip. Now what we'll do is slightly apply some right there and we'll apply a little bit to that one too. Now this will help it like mix with the solder that's already from factory on the board and help it melt a lot easier. And then uh, what you can do at this point is slowly heat up the, the board 
kind of go in like a circular motion. Because as you see on this side, it has the, the pins over here, okay? So the pins have to be heated as well, just so you can take it off a lot easier. So let's see if we can remove this. Typically with PS5s, it's very difficult to get it to remove. And what you can always do is get your get your solder gun and apply it on the on the tips right here too, right? Just go back and forth, go in a circular motion. If you apply it here, it'll get it extra hot onto just the tips. Try not to touch any of the capacitors or anything whenever you're doing this. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys on the camera here um, how I like to take it off. So I'm gonna get this right here. There you go. And that's off. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it fell off. And there it is. So we got it back under the microscope. And that's not too bad. It's a really good removal. I'm kind of proud of myself. <laughs> oh, wow. That is very, very badly damaged. Look at, look at all the pins. Look at how they're bent. This is a new one. That's how it looks. Okay. This is the broken one on the damage. Put it side by side. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next step. What we're going to do now is um, we're going to go ahead and clean out the old solder that came from factory. Get some flux on here just so it can come off a lot easier. And then what you do is just uh, clean off your tip and then hold it down. Go ahead and get that off right there. And typically you don't want to go back and forth this way, um, but you know, I have the experience. I don't have to worry about damaging the traces. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. You just want to lightly touch it. Uh, this part you can just push down on it. You can take it off. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing from the other side. So if you ever have issues with it, like not, like if it's like right in the hole and you can't get it out, get your hot air gun. And then you just need one of these suckers. Once it's heated up enough, just go ahead and suck this out. There's one, there's two. Get, your, get yourself some 99% uh, IPA, isopropyl alcohol. And then just while it's uh, cooled off, just go ahead and clean it. I'll go ahead and prep the, the pins here, uh, the traces. So what I like to do is kind of touch it and kind of see where I'm working because it's hard to tell. And then you can just slowly just add it to the tip. There you go. And then just go back and forth like this. You always want to follow the trace. You don't want to do it the other way because you could like knock it off. I'm going to just put it in the holes right here. Make sure it's touching. Um, as long as it's touching to the board, we should be fine. So in this case, what I like to do, I like to flip it and then I get something to hold the, the HDMI port in place so it can be nice and flush. And prep the connections right here, the legs, just so I know I have a really good you know, hold onto the legs. What I'm gonna do is prep the tip of my solder gun, solder wand, whatever you wanna call it. Get a good amount on there, it's okay, because it's gonna seep through. The hole and then just touch on each every each one of these so it can hold itself down now i'm going to use my heat gun all right while i'm using the heat gun put a little bit of pressure onto the port and just go back and forth all right i'm going to check each pin so when we check these pins we got to make sure that they're not they're not moving and they're soldered down to the board so let's check this one that's good <laughs> Oh, you got one right here. So this one's not touching. So we're gonna put solder on that one and touch it down. Good. So I'm glad these in the corner are good because those are a pain in the ass, um, pain in the butt, sorry, because it sometimes knocks off this capacitor. And get our micro soldering tool here. And use the tip, make sure that it all attaches a lot evenly now. It definitely looks good now. Uh, it's connected. Now what we're going to do is just put it all back together uh, in reverse of how we did everything. So just remember that whenever you're putting this on, make sure you flip this fast, and not crazy fast, but flip it evenly so the liquid metal doesn't go everywhere, okay? So you flip it, put it down onto the metal heat sink. All right, guys, so as you see, we did do the repair. It was a successful repair, and uh, I'll do my best to show you what I know. I've been doing this for a very long time, and I'm learning every day. You know, you, you learn every day. So 
definitely, you know, stay tuned. We'll have uh, more content coming out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe, share this with your friends and family, share it with anybody that you think needs help with uh, learning how to do repairs. And uh, I'll see you next time.